Whether you work in a more or less traditional kind of office or some other type of environment, you're going to develop relationships in the workplace. And we're not talking necessarily about romantic relationships, but just the idea that you spend how many hours a day with these people and how many hours a week and over the course of a you know, working career, you're going to spend a lot of time with the people that you work with. So it's important to recognize the different types of relationships that we have in the workplace and and uh, and and just as importantly, how we can effectively communicate in the workplace. So we're going to talk in this video about communicating in the workplace and, and the different things that are relevant as we discuss and dis and think about those different types of workplace relationships. Then. So let's start with friendships and coworkers. So these are non-romantic relationships. You know, we're not, we're not talking about you know, getting involved with somebody in the office, but we still, we spend a lot of time with these people and, and friendships can develop or not as we'll find out here. So um, first of all, we need to remember that we have to keep these kind of friendships in context. And sometimes we are friends in the office with people and, and we may have friendships in the office, but it's possible that those friendships may not extend outside of the office. Maybe these aren't people that we hang out with on a regular basis outside of the office. So it's still possible that we could have a, a real friendship with these people within the office, even if we never hang out with them or see them outside of the office. So we need to remember that sometimes these friendships exist, they exist in a particular context and, and just within the confines and context of that particular workplace. We also need to remember that friendships in the in the workplace can hold tremendous value, both for that individual and for the organization, and they serve a variety of functions. Um, just a couple to keep in mind, for example, information exchange, the, the grapevine network is a, is a tremendously valuable communication network in the in the workplace. So for both professional and personal reasons, we have a lot of information exchange that happens there. You get a lot of social support from your friends in the workplace, uh, meaning just again, you're with them a lot of times, even if you're having a tough day outside of the workplace. Those are people that can provide you with social support, both inside and outside of that, that environment. Then they also provide organizational support. They can help you pick up uh, some of the slack. If you're falling behind on work or just need a hand with a project, they can provide that organizational support as well. These types of, of friendships and relationships are critical for newcomer assimilation, for getting people oriented to the workplace, not only for how things are, you know, supposed to be done. What are the rules? What are the official things that we need to talk about here? But also, how are things really done then? We know that there are, there are situations where, yes, this is how it says to do it. This is how it's actually done. And this is how this thing actually works. So for newcomer, newcomer assimilation, both professionally and personally, uh, these friendships uh, can be incredibly important in the workplace. We see improved performance when people have friends in the workplace and they enjoy their, their coworkers. And uh, we see that there's a, an improved level of performance. Oftentimes it can increase the, the level of performance there. We also see higher retention, meaning lower turnover in employees, right? That we have fewer people that are leaving the job and quitting and, and finding new employment. People stay longer when they have friendships in the workplace. So um, that's a, a tremendously valuable aspect for um, the employer and for the organization. And then finally, dealing with organizational change. When we have friends in the workplace, when we have friends that, uh, that are going through the same thing with us, it can make organizational change this exponentially easier and smoother, which has incredible benefit and value for both in the organization and the employee. So all kinds of reasons that these friendships are important and the ways that they bring values both to again, the organization, but also to the individuals within that organization. But we do see sometimes there's a deterioration and termination of friendships, right? Sometimes things go south in the workplace and sometimes, you know, you get that feeling you just don't care for the people you're working with. So what happens when, when these things deteriorate and terminate? Well, I mean, there, it depends on the relationship, exactly what happens, but, but we need to be aware that that's a possibility. And yet we still need to be professional with these people. So we would need to find a way to, to work with them and to, to functionally get along with them. Even if we're not having that friendship anymore with them, we need to find a way that we can continue to get the work done. Otherwise, it's going to put a strain on the organization as a whole and uh, and potentially uh, on the, the put the employment prospects for, for one of us uh, or for one of the people involved there in jeopardy. If we can't find a way to navigate the deterioration and termination of a friendship 
in the workplace. We need to bear that in mind as well uh, as we engage in these relationships. But uh, in the long run, I think, uh, personally, I think friendships in the workplace carry much more value than, than they do. Uh, the rewards there are much greater than the costs usually. Um, so, um, the, but there's something that does need to be managed and, and carefully um, cultivated and thought out um, before we engage in these types of things. But in the end, we're going to spend a lot of time with the people that we work with. And so uh, developing friendships and within the workplaces is only um, natural. We know as well that there are other types of relationships that, that exist in the workplace as well. So let's take a look at some of the different types of relationships that we might have in the workplace and how they might uh, be impacted in a variety of ways here. So um, let's first, the different types of relationships that we have in the workplace, you have coworkers, those would be people that exist on you know kind of a lateral basis. People are at the same level of that organization as you. Um, they're, they're people that you work beside, alongside. They're not in charge of you and you're not in charge of them. So those, those are your coworkers then. Then we also know that you probably have some superior and subordinate relationships. So meaning somebody works for somebody else, somebody works underneath somebody else. And so you have that dynamic as well, superiors and subordinates. And then finally, clients are another aspect of relationships in the workplace that we could uh, examine and should examine as we look at these types of things. So, um, so starting with coworkers, we're going to look at three areas for each of these things, three different types of relationships and three aspects of those relationships for each of these. So starting with coworkers, um, we're going to look at the social, romantic, and sexual harassment implications here. So socially, we kind of already talked about the social aspect of coworkers being friends in the workplace. Um, so we've talked about that for a moment already. We're going to skip over that one in this, in this particular area. Romantic relationships, though, for coworkers in the workplace can be uh, another aspect. Again, we spend a lot of time at work. It's not uncommon or unnatural or uh, unthinkable for us to uh, develop romantic relationships in the workplace when we spend so much time with people there. Um, that does not mean, again, that all all relationships in the workplace are romantic, but we, we can develop those relationships with coworkers then. So there's some considerations that we need to, to have in mind. Um, first of all, again, we need to be thinking about, okay, <clears throat> what if this doesn't work out? How is it going to look for us in terms of deterioration, determination, or termination? If the relationship doesn't go the distance, what implications could that have? What implications does it have in the workplace for us in terms of how we treat each other? Do we need to, to set some boundaries in terms of um, uh, you know, what is appropriate and not appropriate in the workplace for us in terms of how we talk to each other, how we uh, use nonverbal communication and even touch in the, in the, in the workplace. Are there, are there limitations there? Does our organization have some sort of um, guidelines or, or rules about romantic relationships in the workplace? And um, you'll find that many modern organizations do. We need to be aware of those. Am I supposed to be reporting this relationship to somebody? Um, is, is there, does there need to be some official acknowledgement of that? Um, so um, those are all different types of things we need to keep in mind when it comes to romantic relationships with coworkers. But again, it's something that, that's very possibly going to happen. We know that proximity is an important aspect in developing a relationship or consideration in developing a relationship. And so when we spend so much time in an enclosed area with, with these people, it's only natural that romantic relationships could potentially um, develop in those situations. We do also need to be aware, though, of sexual harassment and conscious of sexual harassment um, with our coworkers, of course, and uh, de this determining uh, again what is and what is and what is not appropriate, um, and uh, and that will depend on each relationship um, that you have with these people. So we need to, to err on the side of caution, though, obviously, and uh, and just be aware of um, sexual harassment and the potential for something to be viewed. And remember that sexual harassment uh, really exists in the view in the, in the eye of the beholder, so to speak. Um, it's not about whether you think a joke is offensive or a comment is offensive or or it's appropriate to touch a person in a particular way. It's a matter of whether they feel like it's appropriate. If it makes them uncomfortable in any way, then that, that could potentially be harassment, <clears throat> whether it's sexual or otherwise. Um, could be harassment. And it doesn't even have to be directly to the other person. Uh, it could be somebody who just happens to be what we call a bystander, right? So you and another person are sharing a joke in the office and the person in the, at the desk next to you finds it offensive. They're not even involved in that conversation, but that's still harassment. If, if, it, if they're in earshot and it affects them, then that's harassment. So we need to bear all of this in mind as we, as we consider our relationship with all of our coworkers then. Uh, things also look differently for when you have a relationship between a superior and a subordinate. There may be different, um, 
a different feel for that relationship socially. Um, it may be awkward to invite your boss to a, an after hours party or out to drinks that you're having with coworkers or something. Um, that, because that power dynamic is different. So socially, there may be a different dynamic, a different feel between superiors and subordinates, right? Uh, romantically, certainly there's another, that's another layer to consider. Not only do you have all the usual workplace romance considerations of, okay, what does this look like inside the workplace? What does this look like outside of the workplace? How do we manage those things? What is our organizational policy on these types of things? But then now you have, again, that power dynamic and the question of okay, how does this affect the way a supervisor uh, relates to a subordinate or vice versa. What can that person get away with? What, how is that going to be viewed by your coworkers um, when you have somebody dating? And again, there may be a whole different set of policies in your workplace surrounding uh, if and how uh, sub superiors and subordinates should engage in romantic relationships. Um, and then in sexual harassment, a totally different thing when you when you have that power dynamic then, because you have one person who has more power than the other in that situation, um, it, it, you know, Sexual harassment gets a lot trickier and 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 can be viewed uh, perceived anyway as a lot more prevalent in those situations. You know comments may be interpreted differently. The same comment from a coworker may be taken differently if it's a super if it's your supervisor making that comment. So um, we need to consider all of these things when we think about our relationship both either as the subordinate or as the superior that's going to take on different looks and and uh, but both important aspects for for viewpoints and things to consider. And then finally, all the same considerations for, for relationships with clients. You know, what is appropriate socially for, for somebody you work with and somebody you're a client, somebody who's a client of your organization? What is appropriate social interaction? Is it, and, and is it appropriate for there to be a romantic connection? And if so, um, what is that level of appropriateness and how does it come about? Uh, and then also, you know, sexual harassment in either direction is, is another issue as well. So I mean, we need to consider all these aspects for all these different um, relationships and keep these things in mind as we think about those relationships in the workplace. So we're, we're going to spend a lot of time in our workplace and, and it's totally natural for us to develop relationships in these areas, whether they're friendships or romantic relationships or any kind of relationships like that. It's a totally natural byproduct of spending so much time with, with these other people. But we do need to have in mind that there are separate implications for this in the workplace and, and, uh, and, and just how we're going to manage those things and how they might be different than relationships that exist outside of the workplace. If you have questions about communicating in the workplace and, and especially as it relates to interpersonal relationships in the workplace, please feel free to email me. I would love to hear from you there and, uh, and engage in that conversation in that way. Otherwise, I, I hope that you will continue to give uh, great consideration to the implications of communicating in uh, the workplace as they relate to these interpersonal relationships. Again, we're going to spend a lot of time with these people, and these relationships deserve just as much attention and care as any other relationship in our lives.